獨立國歌手、立獄警察、行銷禁令、查封傳媒，以至沒收資產、禁用通訊軟件及互聯網，最後就會鎖港。喺緊急法下面，今日政府可以反蒙面，聽日亦都可以沒收各位嘅所有資產。香港係國際金融中心嘅基石，在於完善嘅法治制度同埋對私有產權有充分嘅保障，加上高透明度嘅政策，減低投資風險。早前國際評級機構惠譽下調本港嘅評級及展望，並表明近期嘅事件令國際對香港管治制度、法治質素同埋效率有負面嘅睇法，造成長期嘅損害，並且質疑咗營商環境嘅穩定性。投行高盛亦都估計近月已經有十港幣三百億嘅資金流入咗新加坡。如果緊急法一出，等於進一步確認港共為獨裁政權。擾亂法治，並為本港製造緊張狀態。香港人引以為傲嘅法治體系亦都即將作廢，國際金融中心嘅地位亦將宣告死亡。各國企業或者需要審視係咪真係需要設置，經濟一定會有大影響。五大訴求包括普選、特赦在內，每個訴求都係建基於基本法嘅框架上面。相反，政府一而再、再而三違反基本法，無視基本法賦予市民嘅權利。一國兩制，港人治港，高度自治，呢個係香港人最卑微嘅要求，係基本法賦予香港人嘅權利。一路走來，當政權都從來冇尊重過兩制，點樣要求市民尊重一國？請大家記住，緊急立法之日，就係、是、一國兩制真正大亡之時，就係、是、不分黃藍，全體攬炒嘅 end game。我哋再次呼籲國際社會政治，一國兩制已經完全失敗呢個事實。並肯切呼籲國際關注人道主義嘅組織可以伸出援手，從人道危機解救已血肉之軀、爭取民主自由嘅香港抗爭者。香港人無懼惡法，誓死還抗。If you burn, you burn with us。謝謝Hong Kong has been deep in the waters of political unrest for the fourth month since the introduction of the extradition bill. Instead of addressing the five demands raised so clearly by more than two million citizens, the tyrant has chosen to oppress the own people with the police brutality and white terror. Despite international uproar, the government has shamelessly chosen to deceive the world with half-hearted dialogue and a fake withdrawal. Our supposedly dignified official figure has even stood as low as releasing fake news, misleading its own people and blatantly lying about its inhumanity with the single goal of dividing its own community, turning its own blood and flesh against each other. Fortunately, the collective wisdom of Hong Kongers means we have firmly adopted the principle of no diversion, no division and no denunciation. Despite the government's desperate attempts to divide and conquer, we will always remain fully united in our common quest for democracy and freedom. On the 1st of October, the National Day of Mourning, an 18-year-old boy, school boy was shot in the chest by a member of a state-sponsored terrorist organization called the Hong Kong Police Force. This young school boy was far from being the only victim. What we are seeing today is the government choosing to wipe out a whole generation of Hong Kong. Well, Hong Kong is definitely brave, so this pathetic government can rest assured that their anti-mask law will disobey with full passion. Why? Because we have nothing else to lose. In a city where going downtown for a bowl of noodles in our flip fork and wearing black can be an invitation for arrest, we have nothing left to lose. We have never been able to file any complaints when the police go around without their warning card and with the ID numbers covered up. And when they hide behind their own masks to kill civilians every day, if equality before the law still exists, why does the government not make this so-called law enforcer reveal themselves first? History repeats itself. History repeats itself. Anti-mask law in the past have only caused more bloodshed in the midst of revolution. We would like to remind the Hong Kong government to remember the story of Ukraine. The government also tried to impose an anti-mask law to stem our protests, to stem our protests. And what was the result? The law ironically united its own, its own people and even more defeat, 
defiantly against the government. The law that's been helmet and mask can be nothing to terrorize its people. Instead, it's instead it's only served to fuel the already raging fire of revolution against the brutal totalitarian regime. Not only did the law topple the totalitarian government, the heartless and merciless perpetrators who were part of bringing about terror and injustice were tried and purged. Apology at this point were less than, were less than words. Taken merely as a desperate attempt to salvage whatever dignity and chance of life the guilty had. South Korea, prior to its democratization, tell a similar tale. We are not threatening by the Hong Kong government, but the tie of history is should the Hong Kong government be naive enough to gamble away its already crippling rule with an anti mass law? This will backfire and accelerate its downfall. A true revolution before Hong Kong and all, as history has repeatedly proven, will be lost. If and when this amount of burnt strikes, may history remember the couples were Carol Lam, the government, and the CCP's heinous crimes against humanity. The pro establishment defenders of the government claim that the anti mass laws exist in some Western countries, naively ignoring the fact that all these countries are de democratic societies in which citizens enjoy the right to choose their own representative by fair suffrage, and laws are made through democratic systems. In other words, the anti mass law in this country exists out of their citizens' own choice. It's absurd to compare the rule of dictatorship under the Chinese Communist Party and the Hong Kong government with democratic choices of the civilized Western world. On the other hand, Barrister Martin Lee Chuming and Margaret Hoi questioned earlier the legitimacy of invoking emergency regulation orders, claiming that the lack of jurisprudential justification rendered the invocation of unconstitutional. Article 27 and 28 of Hong Kong Basic Law safeguard the freedom of Hong Kong residents, and the mark ban is listed and I quote, the freedom of association, of assembly, of procession, and of demonstration. That's it. More importantly, the Hong Kong government plans to make regulation based on emergency regulation ordinance. This, again, is unconstitutional. According to the Article 73 of the Basic Law, the right to enact laws belongs to the Legislative Council. In past few years, the Hong Kong government has already done election candidates. What Carol Lam is doing is now further deliberating the Legislative Council, overriding the proper procedures of lawmaking, and implementing the so-called rule of law with Chinese characteristics, thereby extraditing and mutilating the core values of Hong Kong's ju judicial independence. Since its government claims so shamelessly to uphold the law, we dare them to answer this question of constitutional law. What kind of solid jurisprudential support do you have to justify the bulldozing all over the legislation council of raping basic law. The government could well be tearing, could, the government could well just be tearing our mask or face today. But what might come tomorrow could be the Cultural Revolution style confis confiscation of your assets and property. The watertight legal system, the protection of our, our private rights and against risk, a cornerstone of the unique status of Hong Kong as a globalized finance center. We have since the onset of the movement, been downgraded in terms of our economy, economic security and prospect by multiple away Hong Kongers, owe money to our com competitors. The implementation of the emergency law would only establish the Hong Kong Chinese government as a totalitarian regime more surely. The violation of our rule of law has already created economic turmoil for Hong Kong. Many of our foreign investors are already considering retreat, thanks to this government. Our legal system will soon be burned to ash, ashes. And Hong Kong status as an inter international financial center will be soon be, be bludgeoned to death. The five demands, including universal suffrage and the and grant of amnesty, are all within the constitutional framework of basic law. The government, on the other hand, has time and again violated the basic law and disregarded the rights of the rights promised in our current constitution. On 1st of July, protesters tore the basic law into pieces, not to show disrespect towards this constitution, no document, but to mock the government's disregard for its sins. The 1st of July of 19, in 19, 
1997. One country, two systems. Hong Kong people rule in Hong Kong. A high degree of autonomy based on the humblest of, de the humblest of demands on the lips of, uh, of us Hong Kongers. When the, when the governing power has never respected two systems, what right does it have to demand that citizens respect one country? Today, emergency law is declared as a dying day of the one country, two system principle. Those who monitor and review the status of autonomy in Hong Kong from foreign countries will understand what this implies a true end game. Would hereby, hereby like to make an urgent appeal to humanitarian organizations in the international community to lend a helping hand to Hong Kong? Please come to us with as much as humanitarian aid as possible, and as soon as possible. Hong Kong has nothing but our bare flesh against this blasting gun and right gear of this tyranny. This tyranny wants to kill every single one of us. We are making this desperate appeal to you, for we have exhausted all other options, and we are dying out. Even in the face of this evil law, Hong Kong will never bow down or give in. If this government wants us all to burn, we will make sure this government burn with us. If we are taking a trip down to hell, we shall make sure that our government comes along and stays there. Thank you. Thank you. 